Alright, back again. This is Mr. Yusuk, and we're going to continue playing Super Mario Star Road. Let's go! In the last video, we trounced through Course 1, so obviously we're off to Course 2 now. And... Uh, the camera's kind of funky in this one. It's hard to... Really see how you're getting in there. There we go. Course two, Skyland Resort, the new Wop King. Come on, there we go. Hello, sir. Welcome to the Skyland Resort. I would like to be able to tell you that this is a place to relax and enjoy the view, but unfortunately, we are having oh, jeez, Chris, <laughs> having some trouble lately. One of Bowser's wacky troops calling himself the new Womp King has just showed up, and is threatening to take over this beautiful place. The residents are too scared to even leave their houses. So this is what I refer to as an open bottom world. Uh, so there's no ground floor for you to land on, so you just kind of fall and die. Uh, between it being open bottomed and there being a an obvious parallel to Super Mario 64. This is supposed to be kind of the Womp's fortress of the game. Second course, open bottom. And it's a little more open bottom than Womp's fortress. Really, you can only fall off the sides of Womp's fortress. But this one, you've got more opportunities to kind of fall. Anyways, I am not going the right way. I was going the right way the first time around. I like this level, it's a little less linear, there's more pathways. Um, some parts of it have some pretty nasty jumps that I'm not too hot on, but I think it's a nicely designed level. Definitely has more exploration options. Oh yeah, you're the plumber who defeated the old Womp King, -er, but he was not fit for a king, just pathetic stepping stone, yada yada yada, who cares? Same strategy as the Womp King. Oh, jeez. Same strategy as the Womp King from Super Mario 64. Um, there are those holes in the map, though, and you will fall down if you hit them. Those lead right to the bottom. There's not like a. Jeez. Not a little stepping area for you there. Why do you step on us like we were nothing? Maybe you'll finally learn a thing or two when the rest of us arrive. Waha. Mm, there we go. First one down. Here we go! There we go. Climb the windmill. So, we're going to be going the same way this time, but we're actually going to head inside the little windmill house instead of taking a detour and camera angles. Oops. At the top of this, it's very important to jump in, uh, kick, jump kick, because he will knock you back, like, almost every time. So, there's some wall jumps we need to do to get to the top of this guy. Oh crap. Oops. Yeah. This is one of the things I don't like about this game is controlling Mario in very tight spaces is not and this is a problem with Super Mario 64 as a game, not Super Mario Star Road. Uh, Mario does not control for well in small spaces. Uh, the camera is still kind of primitive and leads to problems. So that's why I have to zoom in for that, because I can't get the camera to warp around that doorway. Oh, 
Hurry, Bowser is causing more chaos every minute. You have enough power stars to break the seals and the doors to Chucky Harbor and Gloomy Garden. So get in there and hunt down some more power stars. It'll be some time before we go there. Still have the rest of this level and then the next one to do before we head off. The Flying Stepping Stones. Which ones are this? These. They. You have to do that every time. He will get you. I want to say that the flying. Okay. Actually, there, in the distance, you'll see the little green blocks leading to that. Um. Question mark box. That is the flying stepping stones, I think. However, we cannot access that one until we have the metal cap. So we're going to be skipping it for the time being and doing some other stars. Oh jeez. Okay. All right. So we want to get on. Oh, we want to get on that rooftop over there. Come on. Oh crap. Because there's the star behind the bars, and up on top of that second part of the rooftop is the switch. We will need to open it. You actually need both caps to finish this. Or, no, both caps. There's three. Um, you need the invis cap and the metal cap because the last star you'll need, it, the last star you get is with the invis cap. There we go. Made it that time. That's that red coin. I don't need that. It's the switch over here is what I'm looking for. Alright. And there's our star. Saw up there on the kind of steeple of that roof. I don't really know how to get that without jumping on top of the Laiku or whatever his name is. I'm not even sure if there's a way, so you get like one shot at it. Um, speaking of red coins, we're probably gonna do the red coin one right now because I think it's the only one left that we can actually do. And while we're at it, we'll probably do the hundred coin star as well. Oh, come on. There we are, eight days later. Get this red coin, we have to wall jump off of this at the right angle. There we go. Gonna go back up here because I think this is one of the red coins that really duped me for the longest time.
See, you can see there. There's that red coin on top of that steeple. There's a little Laiku guy over by it, and I don't really know how you're supposed to jump up there without hitting him and using him as kind of a secondary jump. Alright, so here's the red coin, and you'd think, you know, logically, grab the edge. But you don't activate the red coin by doing that. So here's what you have to do. You have to jump, and then jump kick to get your momentum back. This is one of the things that Super Mario Star Road uses more... Oh, by the way, I got the other red coin while doing that. This is one of the things Super Mario Star Road does more than Super Mario 64. The jump kick is used more often. In Mario 64, it wasn't that relevant of a jump, because most jumps you could hit anyways. But the use of... But one of the things I think I mentioned in the first video is that Mario games are based on momentum. The jump kick alters your momentum when jumping, and it's a very important tool because it allows you to do more things with a standard jump. There's going to be a lot more situations in Star Road where you have to use the jump kick to kind of guide yourself through an, a jumping obstacle. So when I was first playing this, I wasn't really thinking about the jump kick. I did that. I honestly got that one by accident. I just kind of pulled it off. But it's a lot. It's a, definitely a lot more used in Star Road. There we go. Just gonna swim down here and grab some more coinage. Uh, behind me is a little. Jeez, clipped on it. You'll actually see it as I turn around. There's a little cage right there. That's where you're supposed to use the Abyss Cap to get the star. Go to have to go back this way to get back on that roof. There's the hundred coin. Here we go. Now, if I get the spacing right, I think I may be able to triple jump onto this. All right. Well, I hope I can because I just killed like you. There we are. Coin Star is back in the windmill area. That's everything we can do for right now. Um, the middle one's going to require the metal cap, and the last one is going to require the invis cap. So that's going to be it for uh, Skyland Resort. Next time we will tackle course three. 
Until then.